Alright, here we go. This is Japanese from Zero. We are going through Japanese from Zero. Finally, uh, in this lesson, we uh, this lesson, uh, the, the title of this lesson is Having Enough, which we've covered. That is the verb tariru and lists. Hmm. Is that really the name of this lesson? I'm I'm not sure what the lists part of it is, but this is part three. We've already been through a bunch of stuff. Maybe we covered it already. I don't remember. Now, I just want to make sure that you understand <clears throat> uh, a, a couple things. Let's listen to this. Shika. Why, why didn't that play right away? Shika. There we go. So, shika. Now, we're going to be talking about shika today, but it isn't the deer shika. And that's why I wanted to talk about this. And I also want to show you just a little bit of fun thing, a little bit of a fun thing before we get started. Uma. So you've got shika, deer, and uma. But what's this word right here? Oh, never mind. <laughs> it all showed together. Sorry. So this is uma plus shika. Baka. To be stupid. That's where it comes from. Uma and shika. Now, there is some story. I looked it up at one point, but I don't remember the details. About an emperor or a king. I believe it, was in, it could have been in China. It could have been in Japan. I really don't remember. But... The gist of the story, and I know someone will correct me down below in the comments, but uh, he shows his inner circle a horse and says it's a deer, or he shows them a deer and says it's a horse. And the people that agreed with him, either he kicked them out because they were yes men, or it was the other way. If they didn't agree with him, then he killed them or something like that because they wouldn't agree with him. Either they did agree or they didn't agree. I don't remember the story. Look up, it's a pretty fun story. But that's how you get the word baka. That's the origin of it. I knew it at one point, but I've it's been a couple of years. All right, there you go. That's our little fun before we start. So let's look at this. This is the <clears throat> shika nai pattern. Shika nai. Shika nai. Now the reason we have this little squiggly here is because why does it feel like the stream? Okay, the stream is going good. Thank you. It looked like it was uh, stuck on one thing. So shika uh, shika nai has this little uanami. By the way, I don't know if you knew what that was called. This is called uanami up. Uh, because it's up in the corner normally, this tilde in English, in Japanese is called uanami, or it could be just nami. You could call it nami, which means wave. Uh, this means that something comes in between here, and what that comes in between here is a verb. It's verb in the nai form. Now, it can also be in the arimasen form or masen form, okay? Not arimasen, but the shika arimasen, shika something masen also works. Let's go ahead and go through a couple examples here. All right. And, oh, and I forgot to the important part. It means nothing but or only. Now, <clears throat> we already know one form of only. Or you might already know. It is dake. Something dake arimas. I only have this thing. So you could say, for example, um, I don't know. Sunglasses, right? Sunglasses dake arimas. I only have sunglasses. But that's not really... Not the most common way that Japanese people say there's only something. This is this shikanai format is so much more commonly used. Let's go ahead and look at it. All right. Now, it is a little bit hard to get the concept at first because if we're saying in English this, which by the way translates to I only have one dollar, listen to it. You're looking at it and you're saying, I only have. So you're thinking, well, does shika mean only like dake does? It does, but why are you saying don't have? So if you just look at this, you're like, only, only a dollar I don't have. Really, what you're saying is I have nothing but a dollar. With the exception of one dollar, I have none. That's how this works. Shika can only be used with a negative form verb. Wakarimasu ka? I only have one dollar, or I have nothing except one dollar. Okay. All right, let's continue. All right. Now, I'm going to show you two sentences. The first one, I think you're going to get. Let's listen to it. Now, I want to look at the stream, the people that are watching in the live lesson, because we don't normally do a live lesson where the stuff is intact, where the uh, chat is intact. So let's go ahead and say, what does this mean right here? Now, I'm going to admit, I can barely see the screen because these glasses are so dark. All right, so Zet Horse says, 
They only sell coffee here. Wow. ここでコーヒーしか売ってないです。Genius, right? Only coffee is sold here. They only sell coffee here. Any one of those sentences will work perfectly. Because Japanese doesn't have pronouns, you can guess that if we were talking about a particular store, then the word they could be in there.、Um, we, that sentence in English could be a little bit variation, but it really just means wherever we are, ここ here, ここでコーヒーしか With the exception of coffee, they sell nothing. Now, that, that doesn't mean that they don't sell crackers or cookies. It just means if you went in there to buy tea, for example, and you're saying, oh man, they only have coffee. That's what you're saying. They only have coffee. They only sell coffee here. Or with the exception of coffee, they don't sell the other thing that we're looking for, right? It just means they only sell coffee here. Don't think about it too hard. I don't want you to analyze this too hard. Please, I would say, don't translate it like they sell nothing but coffee here. I think it makes more sense naturally in English to say they only sell coffee here. That is much more、uh, how, in line with what we say. The only difference is, is that Japanese has this way of saying it. All right? Now look at this one. It looks surprisingly similar. Let's listen to it. Here, listen to the first one first. ここでコーヒーしか売ってないです。ここでしかコーヒーを売ってないです。What does this mean? Let's see if、uh, Zet Horse can get this one. Hmm. ここでしか Now, notice that the shika's location has changed. Here, the shika is after coffee. ここで So, your day is your event、uh, location marker. It marks where the thing is happening. And shika says, this is all. And then the action, right? Okay.、Uh, ty- okay. So, Zet Horse says they're not selling a deer coffee. <laughs> Wow, you're going to be embarrassed when you find out that's not. That's not. Okay, now, if there was a thing called shika kohi, yes, but listen to the way she's saying it. ここでしかコーヒーを売ってないです。There's a definite pause. ここでしか Okay. Only here you can buy coffee. A few of you have said, right? Now let's go ahead and look. ここでしかコーヒーを売ってないです。Here is the only place that sells coffee. Now, that could be this is the only place, whatever, whatever makes sense naturally in English. We've talked about this before.、Um, it's not exactly in book four, but it's in book five, and eventually I'll probably bring it down to book four.、Uh, but the higher level your Japanese gets, the more you realize hey, I can't just direct translate everything. Not every word in the Japanese sentence is required to be in the English sentence. And sometimes you have to add things to the English sentence to make it sound natural. Your goal is to not. Have crappy English or crappy Japanese. If you're going to say something in Japanese or English based on an English sentence or based on the Japanese sentence, you, your, your entire goal is to make sure that what you're saying relays the same thing, regardless of if you have to add words into English. Okay? For example, when we're saying something like, Ichi doru shika arimasen, you're really just saying, I only have a dollar. You're not saying, with the exception of no money, or with the exception of this one dollar, I have none. You're not saying that. That's bad English. Keep your English natural, keep your Japanese natural. And if that means you have to switch them, some things around, that's fine. If you're doing a test in school and you have a teacher that wants everything to be literally direct translations, then that's one thing. But typically, when you're taking Japanese and making it in English, either in your head or when you're translating for someone, you're going to give what's called an iyaku or a liberal translation. We want a liberal translation that gets the meaning across. All right, good. We're having fun so far because it's kind of, we're going to ramp it up just a little bit as we, go, as we go along here. But it's fun, and I hope you're learning. Here we go. Here we go. Now, that,、uh, this is, I think we're still in nouns. Okay, here we go. What does this mean? Let's see here. Now, this is a very, very possible scenario. You're on a trip somewhere, and maybe a Japanese person might say this to you. They're, they're on a trip to America, they're on a trip to France, wherever you live, and this could, this could be something. Right? So, Now, if we just look at the verb, Now, we know the verb, motsu. I actually don't remember if we did motekuru yet in the books, but we'll learn it here. Motekuru means to bring, Motteiku means to,、uh, to take, to go somewhere with something. This is to bring it here. So, motekitenaides by itself means I haven't brung, I did not bring. Right?、Uh, or, and, and because it's kite nai, it's current. 
It's kite inai, but you know the Japanese dropped the e. So kite nai means motte kite nai, meaning right now I haven't brought anything but yen. I only brought yen. Yen shika motte kite nai desu. Okay. I only brought yen. That would be a good translation of that.、Uh, John Jones says, bring only money. Yen does not mean money. Believe it or not, it means yen. It does not mean money. And it's not yen, also, it's yen. Yen. I think、um, the reason why we call it yen with the ye is because this is a, th- a theory. Seng yen. Seng yen. Seng yen. Seng plus yen. And even ichiman yen. Man yen. It's not ichiman yen. It's ichiman yen. And it sounds like it goes to a. Yeah, try saying it. Try saying isen or sen yen or ichiman yen. If you go from the un to the e, it kind of sounds like again. I think that's probably why it,、um, it comes like that. All right. Yes. And you are, that is true, Bjorn. Okane is money. And it would be weird. It might be weird to say, Okane shika motte kite nai desu. I only brought money. I, I guess. I guess you could take a trip and only have brought money, you know, because maybe you plan on buying clothing when you were there, right? All right. Let's keep going. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> I, let's see what this is. Hmm. <laughs> maybe some words we don't know. But if you watch anime, you might hear something like this. Ore ni wa omae shika inai yo. Ore ni wa omae shika inai yo. Now, I think we learned ore in book three. Ore is just I. Now, typically it's a male thing to say. It doesn't mean that women don't say it, it just means it's commonly a masculine sounding thing. And a woman might say it just to show that she's tough. She might be one of those like, little scrappy, you know, like a, a scrappy anime character saying, oh, ore, ore, you know, she might say ore, but it's generally a male thing to say, okay? And omae is really rude for you, but, but, here's the key thing about rude Japanese, about Japanese that's rude. When you're talking to your friends and you're talking to your family and people that are really, really close to you, rude Japanese isn't so rude. If you think about even English, when we say, Really, we can say F you to a friend, it's not rude. If you say F you to the waitress, it's really rude because you don't know her. But to a friend, you can joke. Oh, you can say to a friend, I, Oh, I hate you. I hate you so much. But we really don't say that to people that we don't know. It's the same thing here. So, omae is really rude for you. Okay. Now, there are、uh, couples where they just refer to them, each other as omae. Like, um, a husband might, it doesn't mean he's being rude to her. It's an affectionate term at that point. So just be careful. Just because it sounds rude doesn't mean it's rude when you're talking to friends. So what does this mean? For me, there's only you. No, no, Rebecca, it is not I am the only one for you. That would be for you, I am the only one. O mai ni wa, or anata ni wa, watashi shika inai. Right? And, that, do, and that, that doesn't mean I'm the only one for you. That means there is no one else for you except me. Okay? This, this means there are no other options. For me, there's only you. Now, it's kind of weird because this is, this is not a. Th- this wasn't said with enough passion. Listen to this. And when we recorded it, I brought it up. And、uh, I thought it was kind of funny. So I'm going to keep, you know, we, we kind of established that we like to have some fun parts. Here's the entire exchange. My wife is reading it. And I tell her we need more passion. Yes, this will be in the video. Of course, it's going to be in the video, guys. This is, I'm going to just release this video live like this. We're not, we're not going to cut things out.、Uh, as you know, I do a lot of live video, but I normally, normally the lesson videos, I cut the live, I, I remove it, and then I re- release just this video. But today, we're doing it this way. All right, here we go. Let's see if we understand this one. Okay, I'm going to look over the stream. We're going to see who's chatting and see if you understand. 
この車には四人しか乗れません。One more time. この車には四人しか乗れません。Now you might be wondering why is there a wa there? That just shows stressing. Ore ni wa, for me? There's only you. Kono kuruma ni wa, for this car? What about this car? Oh man, oh, so many wrong answers. I'm just, I can't, like, I can't keep up. But Julia, 1611, I'm going to keep you in this video forever. Your mistake will be bur burned into this video. You said there are only four people in this car. Nope. That is not what that would mean.、Uh, Zet Horse says, also wrong, also going to be in this video forever with a mistake. Only four people can drive in this car. No, because to drive is unten suru, and that would be unten dekinai. Kono kuruma, yon nin shika unten dekimasen is what that would be. If you're going to say there's only four people in this car, it would be kono kuruma ni wa yon nin shika imasen. Uh, Danny has the closest answer that I can see. It might be out of order. I apologize. I can't see everything. It says, This car has a capacity for four people. It's close. It's close.、Uh, Bjorn says, This car only has room for four passengers. Okay. I feel like those answers are what I would say good equivalent English. Let's look at the answer. Only four people can ride in this car. Noru means to ride. That's what it means. So, of course, it makes sense. You don't have to do a roundabout way to make the English sound natural. It's natural to say only four people can ride in the car or only four people can fit in the car, like you were saying. I think that's a good answer. I do want to point out one thing just because、uh, even though this is basic Japanese, we learned this in book two,、uh, you might think, did he make a typo? It should be yonning or shining.、Mm, can never be shining. We know that. But it's not yonning, it's yoning. yoning. Just like four o'clock is not yonji, it's yoji. All right? Oh my gosh. Let me try to catch up. Let me see what you guys.、Uh, oh man, all these only four people. John, John Jones, I'm going to、uh, immortalize you with an English error. Only four people is able to ride in this car. I know you're typing fast, but when you say four people in English, you must have your B verb must be R. Psst. Amateur mistake. I would never make a typo like that. Ever. All right, let's continue. All right, here go some more example sentences. This is something I definitely, if I said this, it's completely true. Now I want to point out something while you guys try to give me the answers, okay?、Uh, this is. Kiku kanji, you might say, I don't remember seeing this, this kanji for Kiki Masen, for Kiku. There are two kanji for Kiku. One is more ask, and this is more listen to music. Okay. Commonly, the other one does get switched. I, I've seen it mistakenly used, but this is more for listening to music. And the other one is like ask a question type of an ask, but they both can mean ask, I mean、uh, listen. So a little bit, a little bit crazy. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got some answers.、Uh, who's, who's got the first one? Oh my God.、Uh, all of you are getting it right. <clears throat>、uh, now, Quebec87XX says K pop? K Korean pop? Yes, I probably, should, I probably should have said it's Korean pop, but no one says Korean pop. Nowadays, everyone,、uh, pretty much, except for you, I think, know that K pop, well, you did know, I want to point that you did know, but yes, K pop is Korean pop. Now, I understand this is Japanese from zero. Because I could have said J pop, right? I could have said, Watashi wa J pop shika kikimasen. But that would be a lie. I actually listen to only K pop, pretty much only K pop exclusively.、Uh, everyone seems to have got it. Very, very good. Okay, do you see how it works? Now, what if I said, what if I said this? This is a bonus. Bonus sentence. What if I said, Watashi wa K pop shika kikoemasen. First one to get this. Is amazing. Watashi wa K pop shika kikoemasen. Some of you guys are so delayed, you're still answering that first question. You're still, you're, you're still doing the shika kikoemasen.、Um, okay, okay, okay. Andrew says, I can't only listen to K pop. No, 
No. Um, I can only listen to K-pop. Bango. No. I can only listen to K. Nope. Nope. Ah. Ah. First one to get it. Crytek God. I can only hear K-pop. Genius. Genius. What if you're saying, oh man, do you hear that really cool J-pop sound right now? You hear that? Who's? Who? Huh? Hmm? K-pop is I can only hear K-pop right now. Kikoeru means to be able to hear or to hear something. Look at that. A lot of people got it right after that. Woo! Very nice. Very nice. Okay, let's 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 talk about what Johan is saying here. Masen seems weird because in English we say I only listen to K-pop. Yes. Yes. That is the point, Johan. It is weird. That's what Shika does. Shika could never be used with a positive form verb. Okay. For example, I could say, how would you say, now we're going to reverse it. In the stream, how would you say, I only want to listen to K-pop using shika. I only want to listen to K-pop. Come on now. Now, if I did it with dake, it would be, watashi wa K-pop dake kikitai desu. Now say, I only want to listen to K-pop without using dake, using shika. I see. I, you smell that smoke from all the thinking? And a lot of you are saying, would you shut up? I'm trying to think. That's not how it works. I'm supposed to keep you distracted. Okay. K-pop shika kikitaku nai. Cry tech god. You indeed are a god. Very good. Everyone else is getting it. Very good. You get it. Do you see how that works? K-pop shika kikitaku nai. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Ooh, I didn't think we were gonna stay that long in this one, but I'm very happy. I really am enjoying uh, talking to you directly in this in this stream like this. All right, let's move. Well, let's actually see. Remember, this sentence is actually "Watashi wa K-pop shika kikimasen." Oops, where's my sound? "Watashi wa K-pop shika kikimasen." I only listen to K-pop. Okay. My glasses are distracting. Are they that distracting? Trust me, my ugly eyes are going to be just as distracting. Seriously. Don't blame the glasses. Look, if you can't get past my glasses, you got to study more. Okay? What are you going to do? Look, what are you going to do if you're a guy and there's a beautiful girl talking to you? What are you going to do if you're a, a girl and there's a beautiful guy talking to you? Are you going to be like, I, I just, I, 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 I can't, I can't talk to you because it's too beautiful. Is that what you're going to do? Come on now. Don't blame my glasses. You're the type of student that is, I don't want, I, we don't want excuses. Please, no excuses. All right. All right. Now, up until now, we've been using nouns. Something shika verb, right? But what's, what's action shika nai? That means there's no choice but to action. There's no choice but to do this action. Okay. Ready for some sentences? Okay, here we go. Now, this is the other kiku. It would not be that other. Now, we're not learning uh, these kanji yet, but the thing is, at look, look, at this point, people always ask me, when should I learn kanji? What order should I learn the kanji? At this point, you just got to learn the basic kanji that are really commonly used. Okay, now in book four, we do a thing called, I think it start. I think it might have started right before this lesson or after this lesson. We have a thing called kanji uh, recognition. And what we do there is we remove furigana, the, or yomigana, whatever you want to call it, the, the kana, the hiragana above the kanji, like this, this right here. This is furigana, okay? Oh, you can't see it, sorry. This is this right here, this dare and this kiku. We, we start removing furigana and we say, you know what? You should recognize this kanji. You don't have to know how to write it. You don't have to know all of its readings. You should just know it in these particular words. For example, I might say, okay, guys, from now on, this kanji right here, recognize it as dare. That's in the kanji recognition section. And I really think that's what you need. You don't need to learn to write every kanji. You don't need to learn the readings of every kanji. Typically, when you're studying a kanji, you want to learn the words that use the reading. <clears throat> you don't need to learn how it was written 50 a thousand years ago. Sorry, I didn't mean to go that far back. It, you don't need to learn the origins of the kanji if, unless that's something that you want to do. You don't 
you don't even need to really learn the radicals and all that stuff. That helps when you're organizing things later on because there's going to be kanji that have one half and not the other half. And it'll be like, it'll look similar, but it'll have a different part to it, okay? Um, and just the, the radical will be different and that might confuse you. But in the beginning, the basic kanji, you're gonna, it's gonna be so commonly used that you're probably gonna get them. It's only when you get into the kanji that's not commonly used uh, as as a frequent thing that you're going to really need to start doing techniques and stuff like that. Don't, you know, don't focus too much on what order to learn them in. Just, you know, as they come up, learn them. And now if you're doing the Japanese from Zero book series, it makes sense to just follow the order that we're doing the kanji in, all right? Uh, but if you're if you're not and you have another book, let's say you're using Remembering the Kanji, which is a popular book also. Th there is Kanji from Zero. That's going to be the same order as our book series, okay? Um, older versions of Book 4, which is the current version of Book 4, is a different order than Kanji from Zero, but we're going to be adjusting that. So it's kind of a little bit confusing because you guys might be watching this. For the, okay, please do me a favor. If you're watching this in 2022, comment below down below, okay? Because I know there will be people watching it at that time. Um, so the order will be different then, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, if you remember in the very, very, very beginning of the Japanese from Zero series, I said, there's like 10,000 things you got to learn. The order isn't super important. It's, a, it's good to get a, a base in order. The order that I created in the books, I feel is a, is a good order to, so you can stack concepts. And I'm always trying to be a cognizant of that. We're all stacking concepts, but at this point, book four you can learn some fun stuff. You can go a little bit around uh, what you already know. You don't have to stick to a certain order. Just learn what you want to learn at this point. All right. Back to the lesson. So, hopefully someone got this. I'm sure someone did get it, but I, did, I didn't see it because I was bloviating. For so, I was talking so much. Uh, there's no choice but to ask someone. No, I don't know what the situation is, but let's say you're lost and you don't know where to go but you don't want to ask somebody. And then you realize, ah, oh, my only choice is to really ask someone. I'm not going to figure this out on my own. Dareka ni kiku shika nai desu. And we might not know what dareka means. I don't remember where we learned that. Uh, but dareka means someone. You could tell by the context that it is someone because of the sentence. Dareka ni kiku shika nai desu. Kiku shika nai desu. This verb here, before the shika nai, actually, I should have underlined shika nai, not just shika. Because this is going to always be Shikanai or shika arimasen, okay? Uh, it's not going to be, uh, typically not going to be another verb here for this, when you have a verb here, okay? Uh, so kiku shika nai means only choice to do is to ask. And the kiku, the verb that goes here, must always be in its plain form or informal form or u form or dictionary form, whatever this form is called in your head. This is the form the U form is what I like to call it. I also call it the dictionary form, and a lot of books like to call it the plain form, okay? All right. I call it the dictionary form because that's how it's in the dictionary, but with modern online dictionaries, that's not often the case. It can be in all sorts of forms and depending on the dictionary. All right, what's this one? お母さんに言うしかないです。お母さんに言うしかないです。お母さんに <clears throat> No choice but to tell mom. Very good, Pino. You are now in this video forever getting it right. Okay? There's no choice to tell, but to tell mom. We have to tell mom. There's no way around it. Okay? It doesn't mean we have to tell mom, but if you translate it as that in the middle of a... If you translate it that way, because there's, there's other ways to say we have to, but if you were doing translation work back and forth... And you were just translating that someone said, Okasa ni yushu We have to tell mom. If that was a movie subtitle, I would take that. I would take that as a good translation because that's really what you're trying to say. We have no other option but to tell mom. Okay? Now, I've added a word here because it's possible that this kind of a word would be here in between the shika and the nai. Listen to it. Hotel ni tomaru shika hōhō ga nai desu. Okay? Hotel ni Hōhō means method, okay? It's also way, a way to do something, right? Hōhō. So let's look at the English. The only way is to stay in a hotel. We could have said, 
nidus, meaning there's no choice, we have to stay in a hotel. Now, here's my question for those of you in the stream. I told you this is going to get more complicated, only because it's the first time you're hearing it, and I'm throwing very, very similar sentences with minor changes. What if I said, Hotelu ni tomaru hōhō ga nai desu? If I just remove the shika, how does the meaning change? This is how the shika is super important. Hotelu ni tomaru hōhō ga nai desu. What does that mean? And I'll wait, there's a slight delay in the uh, chat. There's no way to stay in a hotel. Energy core, very good. There's no way. There, whatever it is, like it, there's just no way. There's no way to stay in a hotel. That's it. Right? Now, when the shika is there, it becomes, there's no, the only way is to stay in a hotel. But without the shika, now we're directly modifying ho-ho. Right? Here, no, ho-ho is not being modified at all. It's being modified only if the shika is gone. Tomaru hōhō. I could say, teach me how to stay in a hotel. Tomaru hōhō, oshiete kudasai. Teach me how. Teach me the way to stay in a hotel. Okay? That's a little bit out of the scope of what we were doing. But that's how important it would be. If You, you can't drop the shika. shika. Shika feels kind of like um, an adjective, uh, not an adjective, a, uh, a particle here. But you, it's not, and you can't drop it. Okay? All right, here we go. Here's some more. Here's some more. All right, all right. Let's look at these. Let's look at these two sentences together. Now, I'm going to play them both. And I don't please take a moment and think about the differences in these sentences because only really one thing is different. Listen. Popcorn dake wa tabetaku nai desu. Popcorn shika tabetaku nai desu. So our difference is dake wa, the wa is just being used to stress the dake. We could have said popcorn dake tabetaku nai desu. That would have worked too. Popcorn dake wa tabetaku nai desu. Popcorn shika tabetaku nai desu. See how different this is? The verb is the same. The verb is tabetaku nai desu. Meaning, I don't want to eat. What don't you want to eat? If you're not good in Japanese, you would hear popcorn Tabetakunai. I don't want to eat popcorn. But one of these sentences means I only want to eat popcorn. It's this. That's not this one. Sorry. I, the order is weird. I'm sorry. The order was this one first. Um, oh, no. This was the one. I'm sorry. This one is I only want to eat popcorn. Really, it's what it means, right? I don't want to eat anything but popcorn or I only want to eat popcorn. Popcorn shika. And this one means I just don't want to eat popcorn. This dake becomes just to make the English sound natural. Popcorn dake wa tabetaku nai desu. Now, these, these type of things are not in this lesson currently. I don't know if the revision will, will go this far and show because I'm just focusing on what shika does. Uh, the videos, if you have the book, often uh, I'll expound on something in the book here in the videos. And sometimes there's more detailed explanations in the book. It's kind of a back and forth depending on how I structured the, the PowerPoint. But do you see the difference here? That we, with this dake, we don't have to have the wa, like I said, dake and shika, same verb, it's a flip on the meaning. I just don't want to eat popcorn. That means I'll eat anything else but popcorn. And this is, I won't eat anything else except for popcorn. Let's listen to them again. Popcorn dake wa Okay. All right. You ready for some more? <clears throat> Are you ready? I'm going to take a little break here. Good try, Zet Horse. Um, I know you, you're joking with me. I know you're a troll. I don't want to go eat popcorn deers. <laughs> Very. It's exactly what I was shooting for. Yes. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you three sentences. Okay. I'm going to play them one at a time. And I'm going to show you three sentences, all kind of close, but different meanings. Here we go. Kono type shika mita koto ga arimasen. Kono type dake mita koto ga arimasu. 
このタイプだけ見たことがありませんうん、mm, What do you think of this? はあ、you and I'm like Can I do this? I re- you really have got to evaluate each sentence one at a time. Listen to them again. このタイプしか見たことがありません。このタイプだけ見たことがあります。このタイプだけ見たことがありません。Alright, you ready? So let's, let's just evaluate. 見たことがありません means I've never seen. Okay? I've never seen. このタイプしか。Except for this type. I've only seen this type. I've only ever seen this type. Okay? Or I haven't seen any but this type. このタイプしか見たことがありません。Okay? Now what about this one? このタイプだけ見たことがあります。このタイプだけ。Only this type 見たことがあります。Now we are positive. I have seen only this type. Okay. Now, this shika can never be arimas. Ever, ever, ever. But dake, as we see here, can have arimas and arimas. And it can do both. So the meaning is much more. This, dake is just like English dake. When you see dake, it's just like English, right? Only this type I have seen, right? And then this one. Kono type dake. This is the only type I've never seen. Or only this type I've never seen. Okay? So, dake is just like English. Shika is kind of really not in English in the same way. Yes, we can, in a roundabout way, say, with the exception of this item, this thing. But it's really not a, a commonly accessible structure in English. Okay? And, and this is why I put it into book four, because in book. One, two, and three, it's a lot of concrete concepts. It's a lot of one on one kind of translations. But once you get into book four, and especially book five, if you watch any of the videos on book five, I know you're saying, How are there videos on book five already? Well, there aren't as of the making of this video, except for what we have the beta classes. We are now writing book five, and then we teach classes every Sunday. We have a live stream showing them. There, there's a playlist where you can watch right now, currently, like 12 lessons where we go through them. Uh, so, if you're already done with book four and you want to look at book five without buying book five, you can go watch those classes and we go through. We're, we're up through lesson five right now. And a lot of times you'll see me saying to the students, or you'll see them really struggling to get a good English sentence because they have to add words. They have to add words that don't exist in the Japanese, and they sometimes have to remove Japanese words to get a good English sentence. Okay? That is very common the higher、uh, level your Japanese sentences get. All right, here we go. Here is our final sentence. And this one, here it is. Ready? このレッスンにはこの文法しかないです。This one, I ask you to please answer in the comments as a sneaky way to get people to comment on the video, which means more people will watch the video, and that will mean more people get showed the video in the recommended. So that's why, if you've ever, if you've ever wondered, Why YouTubers are begging you to like a video or begging you to comment, or even sometimes making mistakes on purpose, or sometimes asking, let me, let me hear what you think in the comments. It's because if you comment, it sends it out to more people. Okay, and that's what I would like you to do. Thank you very much. Remember, you can get the Kindle edition here, you can get the physical book here, and make sure that you have the Kindle app. Without the Kindle app, you will not be able to view these books. That is it. Thank you for watching. Japanese from zero, all right. Oh, God, it's so bright. So bright, I need shades. By the way, please don't cheat. Don't, don't look at the comments. I hope you typed this up yourself. See you all next time on Japanese from zero. We will be heading into lesson three next time. We'll start working on some words, then some verbs, adjectives, whatnot, and then we'll get into the grammar. I'll see you then. Bye bye.